I first learned about Physerum slime molds three years ago, when one of Sebastian Lag's coding adventures popped up on my feed. Since then, I've made a series of regrettable decisions that eventually ended up in me learning Unity. Seriously, I'm pretty worried that they'll charge me 20 cents per YouTube view at this point. Anyway, Sebastian's slime mold video reappeared on my timeline last month as I was working on a Boyd's simulation, and I haven't been able to get it off my mind since. So I decided to build it myself. Fortunately, this task wasn't too difficult since I could copy and paste Sebastian's homework from GitHub as long as I changed it up a little. Slime molds are governed by a few simple rules. If you want the full details, I recommend checking out some of the references I've linked in my GitHub repository. But the TLDR is that each agent needs to care about a few parameters. The first parameter is sensor angle. When running the algorithm, each agent looks at how strong the trail is at each of these three sensor angles. If they don't detect any trails, then they go straight ahead. If the trail is stronger on the left, then they go left. If the trail is stronger on the right, then they go right. Otherwise, they pick randomly. The next parameter is the rotation angle. This determines how much each agent will turn once they decide to change direction. Notice that the rotation angle can be different from the sensor angle. So in this image, if the agent senses a strong trail 90 degrees to the right, it may only turn 45 degrees in that step. Another set of parameters include agent speed, which determines how many pixels the agent will move per step, and a diffusion rate, which determines how quickly the agent's trail will diffuse over time. There are a few more parameters that I've left out in the script, but all in all, it's these few simple rules that create the immersion behavior of the slime mold. Let's take a quick look at the code that implements this core logic. We start by creating a struct that represents the agent. Then we initialize the agents with random positions inside of a specified radius. We also point all agents towards the center of the circle by getting the distance from vector 2, 0 to the agent and normalizing it. Let's not forget to create a compute buffer with this data. Then, in each iteration of the update loop, we pass this data, along with other parameters like speed, sensor angle, and rotation angle, to the compute shader, which will handle the bulk of the compute. Asian. Computation. Get it? Anyway, uh, the compute shader runs for each agent in the agent buffer. First, we get the agent's direction and calculate its next position. We check if this next position is outside the boundary of the map, aka the size of the texture we will draw the result onto. If it is, we invert the agent's direction and recalculate the position, such that the position is always inside the bounds of the map. After that, we update the agent buffer position data and set the position texture, indicating that there is an agent in this section. The code we wrote so far works, but it only moves agents in straight line directions. So in order to actually simulate slime molds, we can start by creating a sensing function that checks the angles to the left and the right of the current sensor. The sense function will determine how much trail exists at the end of each sensor. It essentially checks the three sensor directions, sums the values at the three by three surrounding squares at the tip of each sensor and returns them. Once we have those three sums, we can change the agent's directions based on the predefined rules from the research paper. Once the compute shader is complete, we will have two pieces of data. The first is the agent buffer array, which contains the new positions and directions of each agent. And second is the 2D texture that draws the agents. To finish the code, we just need to set the mesh render of our plane to have this texture. Now there are a few more steps involved to get a trail of each agent and coloring the resulting texture with the gradient, but as my jaded math professor used to say, I'll leave that as an exercise for the reader. Cool. Now that we have a basic understanding of the code, let's jump back into more demos.
Now I did manage to re-implement Sebastian's method of simulating multiple slime mold agents, but I realized that I bit off more than I could chew when trying to add a gradient color for each agent. Perhaps I will revisit this in the future when I have more compute shader skills. If you've made it this far, I'd really appreciate it if you could just hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing for more content just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.